one. Amen. You can go ahead and take your seat. Welcome, church family, to night two of corporate prayer gathering. We're excited about that. And also day nine of the church fast. I don't know about you. I'm a little hungry, uh, but I have to say it has been truly amazing to exchange the hunger for food for the hunger for God. And I've, I bet you feel the same way. And we are excited about what has been happening. And we love to hear your stories about that. But let's dive into this. Have you ever been driving and gone the wrong way and kind of ended up at a dead end? I have done that in my life. I bet you have too as well. It actually has happened to me recently, but we're not going to go into those details about that. But those moments are moments that can cause a little frustration in your life. I know for me, being a stubborn guy, uh, I always act like, hey, I know I took the right way. I don't know when they put this here, but this is something new and what's going on here. Or maybe you get kind of frustrated because you have to backtrack and go go back and find out where you went wrong and then take that right path. Or, or you just ain't got time for it. I ain't got time for this. I got to, to be somewhere and I need this fixed. And back in the day, it was kind of more of a kind of a uh-oh moment. I remember when mom told me, hey, buddy, uh, get the map out the glove box. And then you'd open the glove box, pull out this little map to where you would start unfolding and unfolding. And it would seem like a never-ending unfolding moment where the map reached from one end of the car to the other end. And you have to find yourself on this map and get yourself out of it. Now it's pretty easy. We got the GPS on our phone. It'll stop you before you even kind of get too far of being lost and redirect you and get you back on track. But even in my life at times, I have ended up in dead-end moments in my life, dead-end situations. But at least I'm not alone because the Bible is full of moments where uh, and characters that have ended up at a dead-end situation. I think about Abraham when God came to him and said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you with a son at 75 years old. And like, can you imagine the dead-end feeling like there's no way, God, that this promise will be fulfilled. 80 goes 85, 90, 95. Can you imagine being 99 years old and still this son has it come? But 100 comes and God blesses him with a child. And what seemed like a dead end moment, God used it for deliverance. And then we can fast forward to the Israelites. They're there. They're in bondage by the Egyptians. Moses brings them out of that and they come up to the Red Sea. They're staring at the Red Sea in front of them. Uh, they're like, hey, let's backtrack. They look back. The Egyptians are back there coming to try to kill them uh, and now wondering, like, God, why have you brought us here? It was probably better that we just stayed back there. But God tells Moses to use his staff. Moses puts his staff in the Red Sea. The Red Sea parts, and they walk on dry land to the other side. Because you see, when, we, when you find yourself in a dead-end situation, God wants to use it for deliverance. So let's talk about us. Maybe you're like, well, I haven't ever had to wait till I'm 100 years old to have a baby, and I haven't kind of faced a Red Sea moment. But I think there are dead-end words that, that happen in our life, experiences that we have, cancer, divorce, infertility, unemployment, words like, I don't love you anymore, or you're fire. And we could go on and on. And I'm sure words are popping up in your head like fear, worry, and finances. And we think that the situation is over. And we thought we were going down the right way, but we actually ended up at a dead end situation. And today we have a word like COVID. Who knows when this is going to end or how it is going to end. But we're in a moment where we can't kind of do what we want to do or go where we want to go, or in some cases, be who we need to be or want to be and suddenly we're stuck and we don't see a way forward in this and then we think that why are we here God wouldn't it be better for us just to be back how it was but with God there is no dead ends it may seem like a dead end situation but God wants to use that for deliverance in our lives and it may take some delay but God will always come through because you know the way of God is always always forward so what do we do now? Some of us live in the past and we're thinking, uh, I wish things would just be normal or I wish things were back how they uh, used to be. But if you really think about it, do you really want things to go back to the very things you used to complain about 
complain about it all the time. There's things like, uh, I wish I spent more, uh, could spend more time with my family, but now our family is with us more than ever. You know, uh, we, maybe you thought, hey, I wish my, I could see my spouse more, but work is taken them from me, but, but you're now spending a little more time with them. Or maybe uh, I, I'm, I'm tired of driving to work uh, in the mornings and stuff, but now we just want to drive because we just want to get out of the house, uh, right? And, and there's those moments. So do we really want things to go back to that, the, the normal? And then there's some of us who are looking forward to the preferred future, that we can't wait for that moment when we get a vaccine. We can't wait for things to, to go back to normal. Or we can't wait for uh, things to be a new normal that we can experience uh, change in our life and that we can go back to a routine of some sort. So some of us want to be in the past. Some of us want to be in the future. But what about now? What about right now in this room, right now in the moments that we find ourselves? What about now being a mom or a dad or a coworker? Or, or a friend today. What about now? What, what, what can happen right now in a situation that we find ourselves in that looks a little different than what we thought it would look like months ago in our lives? It kind of reminds me of the story of, of Lazarus. Uh, the word comes to Jesus and that Lazarus is sick. And, and if you read that, you can see the confidence in Mary and, and Martha and all of them. They're like, hey, we know Jesus. It's cool. Let's just tell Jesus that Lazarus is sick, he's going to come, they're best friends. He's going to come, and he's going to heal them. Well, Jesus shows up what seems to be a little late, because Lazarus, he dead. Talk about a real-life dead-end situation to be in. And Martha comes up, uh, Jesus comes, Martha comes to him. You can imagine the emotions that she is feeling. In fact, Mary, she didn't even come. She stayed uh, at the house, and Martha comes into him. If you could have only been here, things would be normal. If you could have only been here a little sooner, we could still be experiencing the relationship that we have with Lazarus even in the days to come. But listen to what she says next in John chapter 11, verse 22. She says, but even now, I know that whatever you ask for from God, God will give you. So what about now? Here is what I think about the now, now. I think, and I don't think I'm a, a, alone in this, but I think now is a time that we're going to see crucifixion turned into resurrection. Can you imagine the disciples? The disciples are there seeing Jesus being hung on a cross and remembering the things that he said that he was going to do and what was to come just to be seemed to just stop right there in the tracks. It seemed to be at a dead end. But God was writing a deliverance story, story that included the resurrection of his son, Jesus. And I believe that we can see dead things come alive, dead hopes, dreams, careers, marriages, family, finances will come alive. I believe it's in this moment that bondages will be broken, uh, that lost people will be found, and this church is going to rise up and be a light in our city that seems to be dark at times. And I don't think we need to wish it was like it was in the Old Testament, because uh, the Old Testament, remember, is just a reminder of the possibilities now, I don't think we have to wait for that, the future moment where we get to have all that God is or be made perfect in him because we can have that now. You and I can experience that right now. I read a verse. It was on day one of our church fast. Woke up that morning, grabbed my Bible, just started reading it. I came across a verse uh, that I absolutely love now, and it's one of my favorite verses and I want to just share that with you and just walk through that for the rest of my time with you. It's found in Isaiah 43, 19. It says, I am about to do something new. And it is beginning to happen even now. Don't you see it coming? I'm, co I'm going to make a way for you uh, through the desert. And I will make streams of water in the dry and empty land. And I believe I needed to hear that. And I believe we need to hear that today. God is saying, I am about to do something new. I'm about to do something in your life, in your family, at your workplace, in the school system. I'm about to do something in your marriage. I'm about to do something in the city, uh, in this church, on the planet Earth. I'm going to do it everywhere. I am about to do something. And, and he says it starts now. And I'm thinking, wait, even now, even in a pandemic, 
What about even this dead-end situation that I have found myself in? Yes, even now he wants to do that. And he says, don't you see it? Don't you recognize it? And I think that's kind of where our problem is in a lot of the, in the sense. We've been wanting things to be like they were in the past. Uh, we're, we can't wait for the future to hurry up and get here, but we can't miss what God is doing now. Do you know that even in our church today, that people are being saved on our Sunday morning experiences? It's amazing. Masks, social distancing and all. God still loves us and that he is still calling people to him to be saved. And uh, because of your generosity, we've been able to, to do things and help people and businesses and, and ministries all over to find hope in the now. The church, the Big C Church, is all over the world doing incredible things even now. Even now. And he will make a way to it. The new now is the, the kind of the new way for us that as we stand face to face with what seems to be a dead end situation, God is wanting to use it for a deliverance story in our lives so that people can know that, hey, I am still the God of the now that is doing things incredible in this world. So how do we experience that? How do we do that? And I think this verse shows us kind of uh, some simple truths of how to do that. One, we need to see it. We need to see it. We need to fix our eyes on Jesus. We need to take uh, our own way of how we think it should play out and lay that down at the feet of Jesus, trusting him and seeing what he can do with it, not just what we can do with it. Because, you see, we, we lose focus on that as we're focusing on social media or the TV, and we think that, uh, that the worst is yet to come, and we, we, we can't fix it. And I've, I've noticed that a lot of people nowadays are, have become experts on how we should do things in the now right now, but we need to see what he is doing and trust him and how to do that. And number two, we need to believe it. This passage of Scripture uses words like now, and I am going to, and I will. We need to trust that when God says that he is going to do something, he's going to do it. He ain't, he, his word never c comes back void. Like He is going to hold to his promises, and all those promises are ours. And then number three, simply, the path is there. We need to take it. Once we see it and believe it, we'll begin to see those opportunities open up. We'll begin to see that the way to our, our deliverance story that he is writing for us. And we'll be able to walk that uh, in his presence. And with those, the next time we come up to a dead end situation, it's going to, to, to make for that amazing deliverance story in our lives. And that can happen even now. Even now in this moment, in this room, that God can meet you where you are and do something incredible. Whatever situation you have found yourself in, you need to see him in it. You need to see him. You need to believe that he hasn't left you, he hasn't forsaken you, but he has come for you. And then we need to receive that. And then we need to apply that to the truths and the, the desires that we have for our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.